What's up, my name is Technumber here for Troubleshoot and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can turn your Android device into another monitor for your Windows PC. This has been a rather requested topic, so I'm finally getting across to it. All you need to do is download and install a piece of software on your Windows PC and install an app on your Android, connect the two together and immediately you have a fully functional second display for completely free. Let's get into it. First of all, head across to spacedesk.net. This is the program that we'll be using in today's video. As far as I know, there isn't a way to pay for the software, so I would assume that it's completely free. Checking the license, the only thing that I see about paying is the separate business license over here for these reasons over here, which you can get through contacting them. But with that aside, let's go ahead and download it by clicking the download button at the very top. This will take us down to the download section. Simply locate Windows 10 64-bit or 32-bit if you're on a 32-bit computer and download it. I'll be downloading this 64-bit version over here. As you can see down here, AMD Radeon software can cause blue screen of death crash on Windows 10 2004. Please update to a more recent AMD software version from the official AMD site. And of course, if there's any other issues at the time of you watching this video, make sure to check this little section down here to see what's happening. Anyways, once it's done downloading, I'll simply open up the Space Desk driver over here. Then I'll click Next, I accept, Next, pick a place for it to install, Next, and we'll make sure to add an exception to the Windows firewall for Space Desk. Next, once again, and install. After the program has installed, you might see this pop-up over here talking about third-party firewalls. I, of course, have to allow it through my ESET Internet Security Antivirus Firewall, but for that, I'll simply just be temporarily disabling my ESET Antivirus Firewall. Right-click, pause firewall, and yes when prompted for admin. I'll, of course, be resuming this when I'm done using the software. As you can see, in the little icon section down here, we have Space Desk Driver V0.9.65. Clicking on it, opens up this page over here where we can see our local internet IP addresses on our local network as such. All we have to do is simply install the Android app, which is also linked down below. Space Desk for the Android. I'll click install, choose the device, and wait for it to download. After it's installed, I'll simply locate the icon and click on it. Then we'll see this over here asking us to install it on our Windows computer. I've of course already done this, so I'll click OK. From here, all we have to do is wait for it to detect a primary machine, or we can click the plus button and add one by ourselves. All we have to do is bring across this little space desk driver window over here that we got by clicking the little icon in our start bar and locate how we're connected to the internet. For me, I'm connected through this ethernet connection over here. You may see wireless or a bunch of different connections. All you have to look for is something along the lines of 192.168, mine is 1.20. So keeping that in mind, I'll enter that IP address here, 192.168.1.20. Then I'll click Add and wait for it to add. Once it's done, I can simply click on it from the list over here. My displays will flash and rearrange, and we'll see this over here. This is another desktop window on our computer. We can access it by moving our mouse far across to the right, and eventually it'll pop into the screen over here as such. Now you can see it in this window, and if I bring my mouse back to the left, eventually you'll see it pop onto my screen from the right. Cool. We can go ahead and adjust our desktop resolution and the rest by opening up our normal display options. I'll press start, type in resolution, and we'll find change the resolution of the display. We can also get here by going to the settings panel, followed by system, and then display. As you can see, we have our fourth display over here. Of course, if you only have one monitor, you'll see desktop number two. If we click on it, we can adjust some settings for it, such as the display resolution. We can choose native for our phone or whatever half of that is, if you'd like a bit of a better connection to it. Turning up that option will make the display a lot smaller on your mobile device, but you should be able to control it as you'd expect, either through touch or by using your mouse on your normal PC. If you're doing it through touch, you'll see a nice little trail after your finger when you're drawing. That of course also means that your desktop is now also a touch display on your Android device over here. So bringing across this option once again, we can either choose to extend displays or we can duplicate a desktop onto this mobile device. So we can duplicate one of our existing displays onto our mobile device so we'll see it both on the actual main screen itself and our mobile device where we can control it through touch. I'll go ahead and duplicate desktop number one 
which should be my center main screen over here, onto display number four. If the displays match, you should see something like this. I of course see this weird effect because I have my desktop mirrored onto my phone and my phone mirrored onto my desktop. So if I go ahead and touch around with my mobile device, it'll move my cursor on my main display over here. Grabbing onto a window, I can move it around with the touch power of my phone. So now not only are we mirroring my display, but I also have touch ability where I didn't have them before. But of course you can leave it in extend mode, which is probably what I would do. And of course from here, you can use a mobile device to control programs or simply as a little render window for something like Photoshop or even a preview window for any other software application. It's rather useful. From here, we're basically done. Simply closing the app on your mobile device, hitting OK, will disconnect us and the external display that we had connected will also disconnect. Scrolling up on this display settings, you no longer see it. Awesome, okay, and we're done. Of course, we have settings inside of the app itself where we can adjust quality and performance, change the FPS of the display, change the encoding color depth, image quality, the resolution as well, control whether it's touchscreen or not, and change the input type if you'd like, set the rotation of the display, and adjust more of the connection options over here. If you'd like to uninstall it, you can of course just uninstall the mobile app, as you would any other app. And for the desktop software application, all you have to do is press start, type in uninstall, and open the add or remove program section. And we'll simply wait for the list to load. The program may crash momentarily if you have a lot of programs on your PC, which is what I have. Of course, if you'd like, you can also open up the normal old control panel by pressing start, typing in control, and then heading across to the programs, uninstall a program section. For me, this is a lot more responsive as this one over here has crashed out and isn't working at all. Anyway, in either one of these places, you can go ahead and search for space and we'll locate space desk. Double clicking on it, clicking yes, and then yes when prompted for admin, we'll hear a disconnecting noise as we disconnect our second monitor from our PC. Once we're done with that, the program is completely gone off our Windows PC and we've uninstalled the app on our mobile device, so it's no longer there either. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name has been TechnoBay here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.